Okay, we'll get started. Um, hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much again for taking the time to join us for this webinar today. Um, my name is Johnny Desai, and I'm on the product marketing team here at Yext. Um, I'm joined by my colleagues, Andrew Sanchez, who works on the product team for Pages, and Aaron, our developer evangelist, who works closely with both product and engineering teams to educate developers on some of our latest developer tools, including Pages. You'll hear from both of them a little bit later when we dive into the demo. So to give a quick overview of what we'll be discussing today, um, first we'll run through a quick overview of our Pages product, then dive into our demo, and then wrap up with a quick Q&A and an overview of our resources and upcoming events. Uh, with that, I'll dive into our overview of the Pages solution and how it can help drive discoverability and engagement for your business. So built on top of a knowledge graph, the Answers platform is a complementary set of products that helps businesses create and deliver best in class digital experiences everywhere that our customers, employees and partners are looking for information. Pages being a key component of this by delivering answers with SEO optimized landing pages, which helps drive engagement and transaction on your website. With the Pages solution, you can build a strong organic foundation to answer your customers' questions and drive traffic to your website. With the X platform, you can generate pages that help capture different customer intents across search engines like Google, Alexa, and Bing. These pages can cover many categories such as boutiques, jobs, services, events, professionals, FAQs, and, and many more. Um, a real life scenario for this could be that you're a bank who might want to drive signups for your financial advisors on your page, or you're a restaurant and you might want to drive takeout orders on your page. So no matter what question your customer asks, um, Yex can give you the tools to create a page that answers the question and then drive engagement to your website. I'll hand it over to Andrew to dive a little bit deeper into what this process looks like. All right, hey everybody. Uh, nice uh, to have such a good audience here. Um, I'm Andrew Sanchez. I'm the product manager for Pages. So I wanted to give a brief overview conceptually of what um, Pages looks like, uh, and then we'll dive into the meat of it where Aaron and I uh, actually head into some code and uh, show what it's like to build with Pages. So there are two important um, users of Pages, and we spend a lot of time thinking about making sure that the platform works really well, both for the business user who's interested in the data that goes in to the knowledge graph, and for the developer, who's the one who's actually um, creating the templates, which are then turned into websites. So as you can see in this um, document, on this uh, deck slide right here, we have the business user who has a straightforward user interface in the knowledge graph, which basically functions as the back end for all of these pages sites. It's here that somebody who has knowledge about the business, who wants to include copy, who wants to update assets, can head into the knowledge graph and make updates in a pretty straightforward UI. On the other side, we have the developer who's working with code. Um, that code is pushed to GitHub, which is a cloud repository for, um, for uh, Git-based re repos. Um, and what Pages does is the system manages combining that code with the data from the knowledge graph and then serving that across a global content delivery network. So what's great is that all of the uh, work of combining these different uh, inputs and making sure that they play well together is something that we've abstracted away so that you don't have to concern yourself with that. And then we spend, uh, we've spent all of the um, effort and engineering to make sure that the pages you get at the end are SEO optimized, highly performant with uh, you know, uh, state-of-the-art uptime. So that's basically how it works. So keeping these two personas in mind is something that drives how we think about the product. So, we're gonna dive into this demo in a second. And Aaron and I are gonna kind of act out what it might be like for someone like me, a product manager who understands the business case and someone like Aaron, who's a, you know, a developer who's emerged from his, his cave to talk to me, kind of looks like you're still in a cave, Aaron, but whatever. Um, and uh, we're gonna go through and actually go through some sort of scenarios about how me as a business um, user and Aaron as the developer might interact and collaborate um, while building on pages. And we hope to demonstrate that it's pretty straightforward to translate business requirements into really powerful web pages quickly. So that's what we're gonna head on do. So um, shall we head into the demo? Let's do it. All right. All right. This Let me is Aaron. Share my screen. Hi, Aaron. Hi everyone. Uh, so yeah, 
as Andrew mentioned, uh, I'm the developer and he's uh, the PM and he's asked me to create really fast search engine optimized web pages for our Turtlehead Taco restaurant locations. So if I click on one of those locations in my knowledge graph, you can see the information about this location. Uh, I've got the, the map marker that uh, translates to geo coordinates in the knowledge graph. There's an address, some hours, some different things about the location. So I'm gonna turn this information and create a optimized web page out of it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go over to my terminal where I'm going to start my new Yext pages project. So I'm gonna run Yext pages new. And I'm going to use a repository, a, a template repository uh, that, I, that, I'm, that I have in my personal GitHub uh, to help drive some of the things I'm going to be showing in the webinar today. So I'm going to select pages webinar. And I don't need to re-authenticate with GitHub because I'm already authenticated. So it's going to clone that repo. Uh, would I like to push local changes for the pages webinar to remote? Yes. Would I like to install dependencies for the pages webinar project? Yep. And would I like to generate pages and test data for the pages webinar? Yes, I would. So now okay. it's going to install dependencies. Andrew, you're about to say something. Yeah, just so a real quick um, overview, Aaron's going through this flow. So whenever you start a project, if it's a new project or building off of something, you can just run Yext pages new, answer these um, questions and then it'll bring down a local um, version of the website that you can run and uh, play with locally. So that's what Aaron's doing. So I've asked him to build this website. He's starting off with this step, which is a good way to go. Yeah, so I need to authorize uh, pages to use my account and we're good to go. I should mention I'm using the Yext CLI. If you're not familiar with the Yext CLI, there's instructions on how you can install it um, on Hitchhikers. Yeah, and this is definitely the recommended uh, workflow to get started um, because it, uh, as we said, it guides you through. So, all right, back to you. Yeah, so now I'm going to run my site locally by running npm run dev. Oh, we got a CD first. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so CD into my project pages webinar and then run npm run dev. Good call. Now, this is cool, uh, and we'll see examples of this, but just to show, the this will do hot reloading. So any changes that Aaron makes to his code will be reloaded um, basically instantaneously locally, and it will also reflect any changes that he makes in his knowledge graph locally. So your local development environment really combines all of the different data sources. That's right. And what you're seeing that just popped up here is the Yext local development landing page. And right now I'm going to call attention to my location pages. So I have a different page for every location in my knowledge graph. So let's click on location five, which corresponds to that entity I was just showing you in the knowledge graph. So you can see I've got, I've got the name of the restaurant here, Turtlehead Tacos, with the address and some basic information um, about the location. I'll just swap, I'll just flip over to that entity one more time, just so you can see um, the data corresponds. Uh, so 529 Fifth Avenue, and we've got 529 Fifth Avenue. All right. Now I see this as, you know, the owner of Turtlehead Tacos, and I'm concerned because it says, well, it says Turtlehead Tacos here. You know, maybe they don't know where that is in New York. I think probably what we should do is we should get the neighborhood on here so that it's easier for, for the user to identify where it's actually located if they're actually landing on this page. So Aaron, task one, get my neighborhood on here. All right, I think we can do that. Uh, it should be pretty easy um, because if we look back at the entity, I uh, do a control F here for neighborhood. Yeah, we can see that I've got the neighborhood field already on the entity. It says Midtown Manhattan. So what I'm going to do is go back to, well, I will open up Visual Studio Code. And let's see, file open, I have this in. You know what, let me just go back to the terminal real quick and open up a new tab and then CD into, close this panel, CD into webinars, and then uh, 
yeah, I'm in Pages Web, or I'm already in Pages Web. No, that's right. Okay. All right. Aaron's a Visual Studio Code user. In case anyone likes to use this, uh, it's pretty good for uh, local development. Uh, all right, let's do it. Yeah, so I have uh, in my project a folder called templates, and each template represents the different types of pages that I have on my site. So I'm first going to open my location template, and I'll zoom in here so everyone can see. And close the file explorer. In my location template, I have something called a template config. And the template config is where I can define a stream. A stream is the mechanism by which I'm pulling data from the knowledge graph into my pages. So here you can see that I have a filter uh, which defines the scope of entities that qualify for the stream. And I only want to use location entities for this particular template. You can also see the fields that I'm already pulling into this template, including the address and the name. So Andrew's asked me to add neighborhood. And as Aaron demonstrated, that field already exists on the entity. Um, if you want to add a custom field, for instance, the cover photo is custom, you'll have to add that custom field to the entity. But once you've got that, you can access it in the code like this. Yep. So now I've got neighborhoods. So I'm going to scroll down to the actual code that does the rendering of, of the page. And I'm going to pull out neighborhood from the document object. And then in my template code here, I left a note for myself to add. And so I've added a new H2 tag with a little bit of styling uh, with Tailwind CSS. And then I'm going to display my neighborhood field. So I'll save that. And then if I go back over to my browser and I go back to my landing page, there we go. I've got Midtown Manhattan up there on the page right below Turtle Head Tacos and above the address. Yeah. All right. So I'm basically satisfied, but you did that. I thought it would take longer. So we're going to add some more features now. Uh, another thing I think would be pretty useful is like, I don't know, is Turtle Head Tacos? Does it only have tacos? Maybe I want some drinks. Maybe I want, I don't know, burritos. Uh, can we get, can we get the food items that are available at this particular location on the page? What does that look like? Yeah, I think we can, we can do that because if I go back over to my X account, you can see if I go to entities and then click on menu item, uh, it looks like we already have some menu items in the knowledge graph. So what I'm going to do is go over to my knowledge graph configuration. And I'm going to click on fields. I'm going to add a new custom field. And I'm going to add what is a really powerful concept in EXT, which is entity relationships. And this is going to be a one way relationship. I'm going to call it featured menu items. And I want featured menu items to appear on location entities. So I will select from this drop down location. Nice. So I'll just jump in here for a second. I'm not the business owner now. Now I'm more like the tech guy. Um, for anyone who's familiar with like, you know, databases, what we're setting up here is basically a one to many relationship in the relate in if you were talking in the relational database world. So we have a, we have an entity type that is linking to multiple of other entity types. And what's what's important here is that we have a database schema um, that supports the logical relationships between the entities. Um, using the related entities, it's, it's a really straightforward way to do it. And it also means that um, updating data in one place will filter through to all of the relevant related entities. So that if I made a change, for instance, to my related entity uh, for the carne asada, that would reflect on all of the locations that also have that. So thinking carefully when you set up a project about the correct schema is a really important step. Um, and it, if you do that well, you can leverage it easily. So, all right. And as Andrew mentioned, I have a one-to-many relationship. So this is my one location, my Midtown Manhattan location. And from here, I'm going to add many menu items. So I'm going to select the carne asada quesadilla, the, these tacos that I don't know how to pronounce right here. Uh, <laughs> And I'll add the horchata sodas. And 
I will add one more quesadilla and I'll click save. All right, cool. Okay. So the next step, just like with neighborhood, I need to add my featured menu items to my template config. So up here, going to add, because this is a custom field, it's going to start with C underscore feature C underscore featured menu items. Now, featured menu items, because it's a list of items, uh, it will be st streamed as an array to this template. So I need to call out what fields from each featured menu item that I want. So I'm going to use dot notation here to pull out the name of the featured menu item. And then I also need the photo gallery from the featured menu items so that we can get that tasty looking food up on the page. So that's the fields I need down in my temp in my template code I'm going to pull out C featured menu items and then finally I already have a menu items component ready to go so I'm going to add that and just to note this is plain um, react here so Aaron has a uh, a react menu item grid uh, class uh, I'm sorry component that he made and he's just adding as a prop to that featured menu item. So any general React library, either a custom one that you build or one you want to get, like from a Tailwind, for instance, provides a lot of these components out of the box, you can import them and use them here. Yeah, like Andrew mentioned, I like to use Tailwind CSS, but you're welcome to use any CSS uh, framework that you like. So I will save that and mm -hmm. go back over to my browser and back over to the Midtown Manhattan page. Nice, we've got some nice. delicious looking uh, quesadillas and, and tacos on the page okay. now. Okay, I'm pleased. Um, so, and and just to demonstrate, so if now since Aaron set this up, I don't need to talk to the developer anymore if I wanna change like Pollo Asada. I can just head into the knowledge graph can delete Pollo Asada from the Midtown Manhattan location, and I can add whatever other thing. We can see that right here. Um, so this is what's nice is that once that code is in place, Aaron can you know uh, go his go his merry way. Um, but uh, like yeah, here we go. Here's another one. Yeah, we can add aguas frescas for instance if we run out of pollo asada, um, and then that will be reflective. And this is a good example where Aaron's running this locally, but if he heads over to his um, if he heads over and refreshes within a minute, within a few seconds, um, we can see that Aguas Frescas is already on there. So it's really nice from a developer experience that you can get changes in knowledge graph showing on your local machine. Um, all right, I'm pleased. I think this is good. I think this yeah, is good. I think we're I think we're out of steak, but we still have water, thankfully. So we're out of steak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I I feel like it might not be. There's a different set of problems there if the business is doing that. <laughs> um, all right, so Aaron's done my first two tasks and I expect as a developer, he thinks, okay, I've shipped my code. I've got like, what, a couple of days left in the sprint. I'm gonna like head off. But unfortunately he told me that he finished his tasks. So now I'm gonna burden him with a few more. I think the next step is that we probably should deploy this. You know, So I, we've already got a good looking site. Um, let's actually go through the deploy, deployment process and you know start driving some business to my site. Sure. So I'm going to add a new site uh, to my Yext account, and I'm going to use my GitHub account to take the code. Well, actually, you know what? I forgot a step. I have to go back over to the terminal, and I need to push this code up to to GitHub. So, so I'm going to do get. I think you're in the guided search. Uh, demo. Oh, that's right. Yeah, good call. Okay, I have too many terminal tabs open. Okay, so in Pages webinar, you do git add all, git commit and I'll call this commit uh, neighborhood and items. Nice. So what Aaron's doing here is remember in the first step, he set up a remote repository on GitHub. So he's made these changes locally. Now he's committing them and pushing them to GitHub. And the crucial thing is that the X pages system ties in directly with GitHub. So that code, the thing that is deployed on Yax is coming directly from GitHub. So if you want to make code changes, you push into GitHub and they automatically are reflected here. But you got to first connect the site. So that's what he's going to do now. So I'll add a new site using my GitHub account.
So this is the step of the connection. Once this connection is made, uh, then it'll be straightforward um, afterwards for any code changes uh, to be reflected immediately. So making a new site, you can show yeah. what you're doing. Yeah, so I'm gonna call this uh, Turtlehead Tacos. I'm gonna use uh, my GitHub account and I've got a lot of repositories. So I gotta make sure I find the right one pages webinar and I'm going to use my main branch and I'll click deploy. Awesome. So if we head over, we can see on the deploys tab, um, this is where the deploy will show up. Usually the first deploy probably won't take too long. It'll maybe take maximum a minute or two um, to finish. Uh, you can see the initial build is already done. Um, it'll build, generate, and then any data updates it will listen for in the knowledge graph and automatically push them out to production. So I say, while that's loading, Aaron, we'll come back to this in a second. I'm gonna give you one more task uh, for this sprint. And if you can finish it uh, you know, within time, then, then you can have the rest of the sprint off, okay? Uh, but it's a big ask. It's a big ask, admittedly. So I'm, I'm thinking now that I wanna incorporate search onto this. I'd like the location search. Um, it can be a simple first location search, but if we head over to, um, if we head over to the local site, can you rerun it, start it up again for me? Sure, I think I still have it running. We still got it running. Um, okay, so we have the home page here. Can we? Can you open that one? Sure. This is the home page. So I think it would be great if on the home page I get a search bar, so that anyone who lands on my home page can search for the individual locations and head over there. Can we? Can you show me how what it looks like to add a search bar? Yeah. Uh, so I can do that. I fortunately, I it doesn't take too long to build a whole search backend in the X platform. So okay. if we go back over to my X account, we could take a look in search and I've actually already created a search experience, but this is really just a matter of clicking a, a few buttons and you've got a search experience up and running, searching on whatever entity type that you would like. So I, whenever you create a search experience, you get an API key and an experience key. So I'm going to copy the API key and go back over to VS Code. I have a component here called, I need to hide my Zoom meeting controls, okay. So I have a component here called search experience and I'm going to replace this with the actual API key. And the experience is just called Turtlehead. Uh, GitHub Copilot has some interesting suggestions. <laughs> yeah, I see that. Wait, I think you uh, missed the E in the turtle. Oh, the, good call. Yep. Okay. And then I'm just going to search on the locations vertical. So I'll on comment that and save. So you want to give a little bit of, in case someone's not familiar with the React here, what's going on? Yeah. So this is a pattern that if you're familiar with the React context API or if you've used Redux before, uh, this is basically what I'm doing. Uh, the search UI React library comes with a component called search headless provider. I'm passing the search configuration I need to that provider and any of the code that's wrapped in that provider will then get access to the search state. So I know that's that might sound like a lot if you're not too familiar with React or any of the APIs that I just mentioned, but what you can think of it is, is basically I'm adding some search configuration here and then any of the code that I add underneath this configuration will be able to make requests to the search API and then display the response, which is exactly what I'm going to do in and my just, home template. One thing I want to call out before you do that is this, um, the components that Aaron's using here that manage the state um, come from a YAX library, come from the YAX search UI React library. So these are things that you can easily import and we've built them so that they integrate really well with pages. So all you need to do is basically import the components and set up the provider um, with that, with the information, uh, sorry, with the API key and with the, um, uh, with the search experience name. So uh, those are those are basically come out of the box. Cool. Yeah, and I'm going to use, uh, just like the, the provider comes out of the box, I'm going to use the out of the box uh, filter search bar. So in this filter search bar, I've added a little bit of custom styling. Uh, I've also, I'm, I'm doing a filter search, which means I'm looking at lo the location entities and I'm just going to search on the neighborhood name. And what you're going to see in a second is a dropdown of all the, the location neighborhoods. And then I'll be able to click on one 
and navigate to that location page. So I'm actually going to save this and I'm going to go, I'm actually going to deploy this uh, and kick off a new build and deploy. And then we're going to look at the changes live in production. Awesome. So um, while Aaron's doing that, this, by the way, actually, I'm not going to, uh, I want you to show them how to do that. I won't cut you off here. So you're just making, show the commit. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So this is just the normal sort of Git flow. Um, where you double check that I saved everything. Yeah, I did. I'll just yeah. double check my changes real quick. Okay. Yeah. Search experience out of the filter circle. Okay, cool. That should be fun. Yeah. Um, so Aaron's making his commit and then he's going to push it. And what you'll see is that once he pushes, it will automatically trigger a new deploy. So if we had, if we head back over to the, uh, to, uh, the platform and head over to Turtle Hut Tacos or Pages Webinar, whichever one it is that you've called it. Yeah, it's the Turtle Hut Tacos one. Yeah. There um, we okay. go. So this is cool. So the first one, let's look at neighborhood and items. So remember, this was Aaron's first commit, right? So you can see it's got this um, item here. If we go to the 33 pages live, Aaron, we can- Oh yeah, uh, I can go back to that. Yeah. So this is the old homepage. Um, and then if we want to look 33 pages live on the right side. Oh yeah, um, I had that. Block, you can yeah. um, look at one of the location pages that um, he's made. You'll have to go, I think there's, yeah, there's just one down here at the bottom, like Upper West Side. Sure. Tracking, any of those, it's all in New York City. So these are New York neighborhoods. So this is actually deployed live. Now it's on, it's on a staging URL because Aaron hasn't added his own domain. But if he wanted to buy a domain, you know, for a real business, we would uh, put the Turtlehead Tacos on here. Um, so this is the deploy that corresponds to his first commit. Now he just made another commit and he pushed that to GitHub. And that's what prompted the second um, item. If so if we head back over to um, the uh, platform uh, <clears throat> and look at the deploy section, we can see that, right, okay, good, it's worked. So there's a second deploy. This is the filter search one. Now, if we head over there and check it out, we can go to the homepage and we should be able to actually see the search fully deployed. Nice. Yes, there we go, there's my search. And uh, Andrew, I don't know if you mentioned this, but this is the staging branch. So if everything works okay here, then we can easily push this to production, but let's double check things first. Yeah. So if I start typing in M, okay, there we go. We got the my locations and neighborhoods that start with M. I'll click on the Midtown, Midtown Manhattan location and I'm routed to the location page that I built earlier. Yep. So that's a good point. This is on staging. So usually, you know, what that means is that this will be a URL. This is the one that's at main zealously full raccoon that Aaron would share with me, the business um, user or business owner to make sure that it's looking good. Once it's looking good, then we can send it to production by just pressing this one button and it'll be instantly published to production. So this is where you would put the real domain, you press publish to deploy, and now it's on production. So if this were on my real domain, it's just using a fake one right now, but you can easily add your own. This is where it would be live. So, all right. I thought it would take a few sprints, but we did it in uh, we did it in a short time. I mean, admittedly, we said we were gonna build a website in half an hour. So I think a few sprints would have been uh, would have been a little bit much, but anyway, that's our, um, that's the overview. So hopefully uh, you can see sort of some basic use cases, collaboration between um, different stakeholders in actually setting up a website. Um, pretty straightforward. Um, if you have a developer and you have somebody who knows what they want on the page, you can basically do whatever you want. Um, we integrated some pretty powerful functionality uh, relatively quickly. And now fortunately the site is in a state where I, um, as a non-technical user, can just go in and make any changes that I want. I can change names. I can change the featured menu items. Um, I can even modify search experiences to make it um, fit what I want um, in terms of the uh, search logic. So hope you enjoyed. It was fun uh, for both of us to, to do. Um, and I'll uh, pass it back over to Chodney for any um, for the next step. Can I interrupt real quick? Oh, of course. I saw, yeah. that there was, I, I saw there was a question uh, in the Q&A about, uh, I think it was about benchmark scores. Uh, what do you think about running the, the lighthouse runner? I haven't tested that, so I could, yeah, do that we can quick. do that. Um, the other thing I'll say even actually is probably better, um, to show that in our next product release. So one of the things okay. that we're planning on doing is, um, you can, we're going to build, it's actually slightly more complicated than this, but you'll be able to see the lighthouse scores and the core web vitals in the platform. So our goal here is that like, 
out of the box, it's going to perform super well. But if you like write a bunch of code that is really slow and you have really uh, poor assets that you're pulling in, you can get a you can get a page that scores poorly. So what we're doing, um, and this is planning to come out in our next release, is we're going to make the scores for each of the pages available on that deploy screen, and we'll provide you with warnings if you're not succeeding. So the goal here is that you will, if you deploy a site or even in staging have a site that is deployed, which isn't functioning well, then you'll be automatically notified about it and can make um, make adjustments. We'll even warn you if you're trying to deploy to production a site that is performing poorly. Um, so that's that's like the next step that's built in. Um, these are static pages um, as I, I, it is a kind of crucial component to this. So what's actually being served is pre-rendered HTML documents. Um, as I mentioned, we have a global content delivery network, which um, serves all of these documents at locations which are proximate to you. Um, meaning that if I'm in New York, I'm gonna be served by a, uh, by a location, uh, by, by a um, edge server, which is located near me in New York. These are the ways that we can achieve the really impressive um, speed times. Uh, the really low latency um, that uh, you know that that we think is a huge value add for a business. So that's definitely something to look forward to. Um, in the meantime, like you know, for the next month or so, if you're deploying on pages, we you can just run the um, the lighthouse um, or Google Web Vitals. Good. All right, a few questions, other questions coming in. Shall we? Uh, um, yeah, I think let's let's give everyone a few more minutes to to drop in their questions in the Q and A. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the meantime, just going over some resources. So um, as a reminder, all the information that was shared today can be found in our training materials on Hitchhikers, which is our one-stop shop for learning and engaging with all things Yext. Um, it is free to use and designed specific, specifically for customers, employees, and really anyone who, who's looking to learn more about Yext. So we definitely encourage you to take advantage of that. Um, in terms of upcoming events, we have a few platform basics webinars coming up that go over connectors and listings. Um, in addition, we do have a few webinars that we've had in the past that are available on demand on both hitchhikers and yex.com. Um, and then we'll we'll go back into the Q and A. Awesome. Um, yeah, I'll just I'll take a few of these and Aaron, we can answer them together. Um, if there's any that you want to chime in on. Uh, let's see. So pages core web vital scores on average. Yeah. So out of the box, you're going to get super fast scores. Like, you know, we expect to see like above 90 for all of them. Uh, the important thing, as we said, is that when you develop, you use best practices, which we make as easy as possible to do so that you don't put anything extra on there. Um, uh, so that is that. Um, I'll come back to best practices in a second. Um, the one thing I'll say is that our hitchhikers modules, um, which uh, Chani just mentioned, which actually are where you should go to learn how to develop with pages, or if you want to start using the solution, are full of um, loads of little tips about optimizations um, and sort of just how you should write code. Um, and then, as I said, the other thing is we have done as many automations as possible to try to make writing that code as easy and straightforward as as um, as we can so that you don't have to actually think about the performance and you just get it. Um, all right, let's see. If we have a pre-existing web page with a header slash main nav footer, can the pages be iframed or placed via code within the body of what's pre-existing? Yeah, interesting question. Yeah, that's definitely possible. Um, that would require um, some dev work to get the iframe set up correctly on your own page. Um, what you would do in that instance is you would serve the pages through the X system, and then you would have to configure the iframing on your own page that has the header, uh, main nav, and footer. Um, that's a bit of work um, to do uh, on your own. You have to be willing to set up um, a successful iframe. But at the end of the day, we're just serving um, these pages um, so you can iframe them wherever you like, as long as you have it configured. OK, uh, another one. Uh, um, is there anywhere, and please feel free to chime in if, if you'd like follow up on any of the questions. Next question is, is there anywhere we can see examples of different pages for some creative inspo of what we'd like ours to look like? Oh yeah, good question. Um, so a couple things. The one that Aaron just made is our like basic starter template. That is, you can get that if you run Yext pages new. I mean, I don't know if you want to do it, Aaron, you can just show what it looks like to clone down in what Aaron did is he connected to his own. Um, GitHub repository, but you can just run Yext pages new and clone one of our starter templates. So we've got that one. 
We have, I think, three other ones. Uh, there's a blog starter. There's a location starter. We have a very um, sophisticated healthcare starter. That's like a really full-blown website. So that's the use case for pages where it's not um, simple locations, but that has find a doc in it. It has full, very, very powerful search. It has a directory um, and it has a locator where you have a map that actually shows locations and it has a much more complicated knowledge graph with um, uh, services, doctors, locations, clinics, et cetera. So that, that'll that also be available uh, from the command line. So you can take that down if you want to build a doctor website. We also have an e-commerce um, demo, which is um, uh, in the Inspiration Hub. Aaron, I don't know if Chandni or Aaron, you want to link out to the Inspiration Hub um, so you can see some of the other cool stuff built on here. But that's also one that is going to be available as a starter template. So if you actually want to build a full, Aaron um, built that, um, a full-blown e-commerce website with, again, very sophisticated search, the potential to integrate with third-party uh, payments and all of that, that is, um, that's another uh, template. So those are the ones you can clone down and like play with yourself and build your own websites off of. And then the Inspiration Hub, uh, it will have um, other examples for that. Okay, let's see, when is the next release? So the next release, the general, um, general release is on the 15th of December, if that's correct, um, Chani, Nick, just so I make sure I'm right. Yep. Yep. Uh, and then, so we will have, that's our next release. And then we have the spring release, which is coming up in March. So the, um, this current release, um, has a lot of, uh, improvements in terms of pages, like the CLI, for instance, that Aaron was just demonstrating, um, those sort of ergonomic improvements, a lot's coming out there. And then the next release for pages, we've got, um, the web vitals, um, that I mentioned, um, in platform automatically. So something to look forward to. Um, do you have some best practices to share from some Yext users companies for some, for the pages, things you showed in the session? Yeah, best practices. So in Hitchhikers, we, we've tried to put all of our best practices. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, sort of like low hanging fruit stuff, like schema markup, um, uh, having well-configured meta tags. Um, all of those things are very straightforward, um, which we, excuse me, which, um, we allow uh, you to configure in the module. We didn't demonstrate this because we, uh, for sake of time, but configuring markup and configuring your head tags is a first class feature in pages. So there's another um, function in the template that Aaron was showing uh, where you can just configure all that stuff. What's nice is that um, you can put that in the knowledge graph and have it streamed directly into the pages. So again, so the business user can control these important SEO, um, uh, these important SEO keywords. Um, a lot of other things come out of the box in terms of best practices. So we're serving images um, with WebP, which is the you know um, search engine recommended uh, format and next generation format for um, images. Um, so hopefully that answers in terms of best practices. I mean, we have a load of stuff about SEO checklists. Um, we auto generate a robots.txt um, file um, for you, which you can then customize um, to improve crawling uh, and make sure that everything is recognized uh, by a search engine. So um, beyond those, beyond those, I would say head over to Hitchhikers to look at the uh, rest of the checklist, which is something we're constantly adding to. Yeah, and I just wanted to add on there, Andrew. I'm going to yeah. drop the link to the community in the chat. Uh, okay. If you're if you're not finding what you're looking for in Hitchhikers, we would love to see your questions in the Hitchhikers community. We have folks monitoring that uh, all the time, so we see whenever your questions come through. And and the more questions and answers we get on there, the more vibrant and the more useful the the community becomes. So we would love to see your questions there. Absolutely. Um, that's all I see in terms of questions. Anybody else have anything final that they want to ask? Yep. Well, I would say sign up for an account. You can sign up for free and uh, get pages working in sandbox environment. You can do exactly what Darren did, deploying stuff and seeing what it looks like. You can configure your knowledge graph. Um, that's the first step. Uh, we think the feedback that we get from developers is once they actually start building on it, they get kind of hooked and they they want to keep building on it. So we would uh, encourage you all to give it a go. And obviously um, any feedback um, through um, 
through hitchhikers or, or through your contacts to EXT would be great as we uh, continue um, evolving the uh, evolving the platform and product. So appreciate it. Yep. Thank you all again for joining. And again, here's the link to sign up for Hitchhikers if you haven't already. And um, yeah, we hope to see you in our next webinar. Thank you so much for your time.